Hello, and uh, welcome. We are going to do some basic cartooning today again. This is probably um, number three. And what we're going to do today is I want to focus on cartoon animals. I love cartoon animals. They're fun to draw. They are the stars of a lot of cartoons that I love, whether they're live action, animated, even print. So uh, let's begin and let's hit that intro. <laughs> Hello again, and uh, thanks for joining. So what I'm going to do today is talk about cartoon animals. I love cartoon animals. I grew up watching cartoons that featured animals constantly. You know, when you're thinking about it, um, you know, things like Scooby-Doo and, and DuckTales and a lot of the Disney stuff, Gummy Bears, Darkwing Duck. I'm just looking around my room here. And seeing all the different types of things, Mickey Mouse, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny characters, all those are things that I, I loved growing up. And one of the things that got me started into drawing cartoons, I mean, I'm just still looking around, you know, Mighty Mouse is something. Uh, if you watched my, sh my, my video on, um, on creating classic, on how to draw classic uh, cartoon characters... Um, what you what you would see is that I used some basic shapes and some of the stuff I've been I've been talking to you about today. Um, there's a word we use when we draw cartoon animals if they if they act like humans. The word is anthropomorphic. If you make a character that is anthropomorphic or you anthropomorphize something, then you're giving human qualities to these characters. So, you know, you could make it a blender that has human qualities and you've anthropomorphized them. It could be a dog. It could be a cat. It could be whatever it is. So anthropomorphic or anthropomorphizing is giving animals or anything that's not a human, human characteristics. So, again, characters like Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, they're anthropomorphic characters. So we're going to look at cartoon animals today. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment and I'll answer them to the best that I can. So let's move over to my drawing board. Oops. And there we go. So last time I was, I w if you watched my last stream, I created like a character like Chili Willy. Chili Willy is a um, Walter Lance character. It was part of the Woody Woodpecker show, and he's basically a circle for the head, right? And the body is this kind of curved rectangle. Now, if you're not familiar with Chili Willy, uh, he's a penguin. And so he's got these circles here, and the beak comes off, and he's got these big eyes, right? And his body is around here. And I know this is a little dark. I'm going to actually change the color in a minute. Um... Right, but that's Chilly Willy. So a penguin who walks on both legs, you know, on two legs like that, kind of has a human quality to him already. It, but you know, it's a little bit more of a waddle. Let me change the color so we could uh, see it better. I'm going to go to a, a like a reddish color. Now, but if we give a dog a character like that, where we start with a circle for the head, and we're going to add in another shape for his snout and maybe one for the nose, right? And then we give him a neck, and if you want to put a collar on him, that's a little rectangular shape. And then let's give him a bean shape, right? A bean shape is a very classic cartoon character shape. And what I've done here is I've anthropomorphized the dog. Uh, you got it, Noah. 
Uh, don't worry about it. Everything that I shoot and record here always gets uploaded right after, so you can always watch it. So if you missed anything, you can go back and watch the watch the stuff. So um, I apologize for calling you Amy, um, but you're Noah. So I'll try to remember that. Um, so what we're doing, if you just joined, we're talking about anthropomorphic characters. So we're taking animal characters and giving them human qualities. So I, I just drew a dog here, and I put him on two legs. So the character is anthropomorphized. If I was to, let's just zoom in a bit here. Um, I'm going to do something over here. If I was to take that same dog, right? And here he is. And I lean the character. Remember, I'm using that line of action. So here's the character. And I have him leaning on something like a like a counter and here he is and he's got his morning cup of coffee right and maybe his legs are crossed and he's got one like that and one that comes down you know and and there he is just enjoying his coffee you know that's that's adding a human a human quality to him so that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to draw different animals. And we're going to turn them into a uh, character. So if I was to take a character, let's say a turtle, right? A turtle, for the most part, kind of has this rectangular head. It might have a little roundness to it, right? It's got its neck, which comes out of its shell. It's got a little tail. And then it's got... It's legs, which are kind of rectangular, right? And I'll just kind of add in a shape here for the eye and a little mouth. Okay, that's still a cartoon turtle because, you know, it's it doesn't look like a real one. But if I want to anthropomorphize him, I got to think about what is the head. So am I going to use a circle? It was a little boxy. So maybe I'll just kind of square it off like that and I'll give him a neck. Now, the neck feeds into his shell. So now his shell is part of this here. And I got to kind of, I'm going to box him out because it's kind of flat on the bottom, right? If we, if, if we were to draw this heavy line for the turtle, it's, it's very flat. So we're going to anthropomorph him this way. We're going to add, oh, I don't want to say anthropomorph him that way. We're going to um, add some boxiness to him and even his legs he's kind of boxy right all right we'll put an eye up here and a, and a thing there and then we're going to add this kind of circle around him let's get that a better circle right there right for his for his shell now we can go into more detail like we could even give him tiny feet and actually make it look like his feet are a little bit more. We could do the same thing with his fingers, right? So at the end of it, we could have a turtle that, and, and I'm going to change the shape and position. So here's the head. I'm going to round it off a bit more. I'm going to give him the neck. I'm going to put in the body. And, and I'm thinking the line of action. So the line of action is going like this. Maybe he's running really fast, right? And here, I always use the run because I just love drawing running poses. So if this leg is forward, this arm is back. And what I want you to notice about what I do when I'm drawing this, this turtle here, right? Um, is with the, with the legs, even though I drew them kind of flat that way, I'm thinking of them in these cylindrical shapes, almost cone-like. So the bottom is very flat and the and the hands are the same way and the reason I'm thinking of them as a cone is because they're going to fit into that socket that you know where it comes that that hole where the, the leg goes in and out of right so think about that you know it's sometimes you don't just want to make everything so boxy on the turtle but if you have part of the turtle shell like right here and it's coming off, and this is the bottom, the bottom part of the shell, which would be his chest as a character. Then we have 
you know, it kind of adds a little bit more personality. Don't just because I say something's boxy, don't take it as everything has to be squares. It's just, you know, I could have a circle, if you want to call it that. It's almost like a rounded rectangle in a way. That's a little boxy. This is kind of a boxy, you know, if I kind of a boxy circle. I mean, I can make a regular circle and then just kind of box it out even after and then say, hey, look, I'm going to have this, this angle there. All right. If we were to draw another animal and that animal, let's say, is... Um, you know, I'm just going to lower my brush size a bit. Let's say we're going to draw uh, a horse. Now, horses are the hardest thing for me to draw. I cannot draw a realistic horse to save my life. Their heads are very boxy. Their 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 necks kind of have this conish feature to it. You know, their ears kind of come up and. You know, and it kind of comes into this jaw, and it's got this kind of eye right here, and the nostrils are kind of large, and the mouth kind of comes up somewhere like that. And then it's got its... And and I'm telling you, that's actually one of the better ones I've drawn. But I don't have to use that. What if I took the head shape, and I made it a bean? You see that? Now I can put eyes on it and give him his nostrils and eyebrows. Now, until I add the ears, this is a great head. It could be used for a lot of different types of animals. It could be even the beginning of a dinosaur, right? But if I put big ears on him, now he's starting to already look like a horse. And I'll even add some of the, some of the mane there. And now I'm going to use that kind of cone shape, right, for the neck. I'm keeping that because it keeps that believability. Because I can't do a head like this that's a bean and then give it a really tiny neck. That won't look right if he's got this really big body. So I'm just going to continue off that neck and create a bean shape. And off that bean shape, I'm just going to use some rectangles. But now when I do the feet, I'm not going to give them kind of human feet. I'm still going to do what the hooves of a horse would look like. And I'll do the same thing for the hands because they have hooves. And give him his tail. You see that? So now he's standing up. He could be doing lots of different things. And maybe there's some hair at the edge here. Right, but that cartoon, that cartoon, the horse. I mean, I could think about and look into a horse and think, oh, well, this is the big leg muscle of, of which would be his hip. And then it kind of comes down. And then here's the knee. And then it kind of comes out like so. And I can cartoon it like that if I really, really wanted to. But I don't like that real that realism feel because then he'd have his other ankle down here. And then his hoof will come out. And um, I didn't mean to add that line there. You'd see something like that. All right. Just think about how you want it to cartoon. Now, it, uh, what if I wanted this to be kind of a, a tough-looking character? I might go back to a bit more boxy. All right. I might have that neck. And the neck's going to come out kind of far because his body is going to kind of be more still thinking of what that heroic body is that I showed you guys. And his legs still be the same, but maybe they're a little more muscular, more human-like. And I can add more muscle... I hope what I'm doing here is making sense. Oh, this <clears throat> and his tail will be over here. And maybe I'll just have his eyes like he's just a very strong character here. 
And maybe he's got some really good hair. There's other ear you may not see. Maybe some muscle there. So I hope that's making uh, making sense. Is there an animal that you're interested in that I haven't... I mean, I've only done two animals, but is there any animal that you're interested in to learn to draw? Just comment, and I'll be happy to, uh, to try to draw that. All right. Um, now, I've kind of showed you some stuff here, and we will continue drawing that. I just want to talk about the shapes we use to create, create these animals. A Malabar. I'm unfamiliar with a Malabar, Noah. I'm going to look up a Malabar. And let's see, what is a Malabar? Malabar animal, let's see, is a large... So it kind of looks like it could be like some kind of squirrel to me. We'll, we'll, we'll draw that in a moment, all right? I love drawing squirrels, so this should be fun. A rainbow giant Indian squirrel. Wow, that sounds cool. All right, let's first talk about the, the, some of the shapes, and then I'm going to draw that Malabar for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a circle for the head, and I'm going to put in my guidelines. So I know the direction that my character is going to be in. And I'm going to give him some circles for the eyes with some pupils. And right now he's looking off in that direction. But now i got to think. Am I drawing a bear? Am I drawing a cat? Is this a lion? Is this a fox? A dog? Whatever. Well, let's say I'm drawing out a snout like this, right? It's kind of this other oval shape I got here. Well... This could be a great shape for a bear. It could be a great shape for a dog, right? Because dogs and bears have very similar head constructions and features. So what if I added another piece here? This still could be a bear. This still could be a dog. All right, I'm going to give him my eyebrows. And I can also go in and shape this head. Okay? You see here... By me shaping the head, I'm giving, I'm adding some character to this image. All right. Now, if I give him tiny ears like this, this is perfect for a bear. I might even give him another mouth coming down. You see that little mouth open? But if I erase those ears, and let's give them maybe some kind of floppy ears, all of a sudden it becomes a dog. And I'll put some hair there. I could even add in some, you know, whisker areas and maybe have some whiskers on the dog. And you see how I'm bringing that character to life? Now, it doesn't always have to be a circle. What if I used, let's use some maybe more triangular shape. Like I'm gonna curve it because I like to curve. It doesn't have to always be super angular. But what if I angled it this way and the dog's nose was a little bit more pointier, right? Well, maybe when you use angled shapes, kind of adds a little bit more of, 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 a, of an evil like character. So like right here, I could have a wolf right now. I could flop one of the ears down. It could still be a dog, right? Maybe I'll flop that ear down. And maybe when his mouth is open, I'm gonna open it wide like that. Maybe we see some teeth and some fangs. And you know, you can see how that dog looks a little scarier than the one next to it. All right, again, we could add in some hair. There's a lot we could do here. And always erase what you don't need, but first always start with the full shape. It's important to start with the full shape. All 
All right. Now, snouts could be different sizes. Now, the two I drew were kind of maybe adult dogs, right? What if I drew a snout that small? Well, now I've got a puppy. And maybe the eyes are going to be bigger because the puppy is, you know, is going to have, uh, is, it's just like making cute little babies when you draw a baby. You give them a big head, big eyes, big ears, but everything else is tiny. And I'm just going to make him a regular cartoon. I'm not going to anthropomorph him. But do you see that there? So changing the shape, same can go for a cat. Um, you know, what shapes make up a cat? Well, well, maybe we do the same as the puppy, right? And, but now we use a small triangle nose, and we've got this here. And maybe they got smaller eyes, right? And we got some big... So this is maybe more of a kitten-like or, or a teen. I'll, I'll give them bigger eyes. I want the, the bigger eyes. And what I'm showing is really classic, classic cartooning. Let me give them bigger eyes right here. And maybe a little snaggle tooth. And I can come off and maybe make, kind of rough up the edges. And you see kind of how I, I've built that, that cat there? Let's do another circle. And let's do a longer one here, just like that. All right. By adding some shapes and a tiny nose and a long piece, I'm creating a monkey here. So again, cartooning is nothing more than understanding how shapes go together to make up the, the image you want. All right. So bodies work the same way. I'll give this monkey a neck and then I'm going to give him a bean body and I might do short legs for him. And I'll use ovals right now for the feet. I might do longer arms because the way monkeys move. And a big tail, right? A mouse might get something very similar to the kitten here, right? And I'll just draw quickly like that. But now maybe he's got these little teeth, and I'm just going to give him some eyes, and maybe these big ears. So adding shapes together, different forms, different um, different ways of putting them together, like just quickly, if I used kind of a cone shape, right, this automatically becomes, if I'm staying in the animal, this kind of becomes a fox, right? He's kind of sly. He's got his mouth up. Maybe his tongue's sticking out, you know, and, and all of a sudden we got this fox character here. But doing the same thing, we can turn this into a bird. And I'll put his body right there and some wings. So do you see how I'm just playing with these shapes? That's it. That's all I want you guys to do. This is pencil and paper, eraser, pencil sharpener, nothing crazy supplies, just practicing drawing your shapes. Now, Noah gave me a request for uh, a, a Malabar, which is a rainbow giant Indian squirrel. And I went on my phone and I looked up some images just now. And it's some of them are kind of adorable. Others are some pretty ugly looking, uh, ugly looking characters. Um, let's see here. So the way I'm looking at it, okay, let's look at this picture here. So their head, we're going to start with kind of this rounded shape. And I'm not going to make it large. And maybe I'll zoom in so you guys can see it better. And let's zoom in here. Okay, so this is the head. And then what I want to do is put in the direction that my character is looking. So for now, and I'm going to cartoon this, so it's not going to look exactly probably like what you're accustomed to. I'm actually going to add, before I put the guidelines in, I'm just going to add another 
kind of shape like that right off that circle. And I'm going to erase the extra I don't need here. They're your favorite. Well, they, they're pretty interesting looking animals. I don't really know if I have a favorite animal. I have a cat at home, so I love cats, but I do, I do enjoy mon drawing monkeys, so maybe monkeys too. Um, now, I'm going to put their guidelines very lightly in right here. And the reason I changed the shape of the head is because they have this nose that kind of comes up like so. All right. And their eyes are on the on each side of the head, but this is a cartoon. So we're going to kind of put them more towards the center. And I'm just going to use these ovals over them. They're usually very dark. And then this comes down, gets darker, and it just kind of, I'm going to give him a smile. All right. Now their ears. I love their ears. They're almost like uh, Shrek's ears. So they kind of come up and they kind of go out like so, like this, this weird triangular shape. Okay. And their bodies, I'm trying to find a good picture of their bodies. Let's move this over a bit here. I'm sorry. And their bodies are, are kind of long. Their tail is huge. And it's not as as twirly as a regular squirrel. So their bodies start off thin. This is that, you know, maybe a pear shape. Because it starts off and then it gets kind of large to the back. Right? And... Let me see here. Just looking for their arms right now. Let me close out of that picture. And I think this shows it pretty well. They have some pretty good arms. It comes off the shoulder would be like right here. And I'm not going to make them big. I'm just going to make them kind of small. Um, because their hands seem very large. Right? And they have, you know, regular squirrel hands. So if you want to make them traditional, they have five fingers, just like, I believe they have five, right? Yeah, they have five fingers, just like a human would. And their legs, and I'm looking for a good shot of their legs right now. Their legs are very much like a like a regular squirrel. They're kind of big, kind of start up over here. And you'd see them kind of hanging off right here. All right, so that would actually go in. The tail's actually longer than their whole body. Oh, no, I noticed that. Um, so I'm going to erase what I don't need right now just to show you some stuff. And they do have, and they are different colors. Yeah, oops, I want to leave that there. Um, oops, let me finish erasing right here. So they kind of have this two-tone feature here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something in their hand. Maybe they're eating something. I'm just going to use it as a circular motion. Then I'm going to thicken up. I don't know if you can see that. I'm putting this, um, whatever it is here, and then I got, I just kind of thickened up the lines. Okay. And now I'm going to draw their tail. So the tail comes off the spine. So I'm just going to follow this back line here and just let it hang for now. And that's really what the squirrel looks like. I can put them on something, you know, but... I haven't anthropomorphized them. I just kind of used a couple of images to throw together an actual cartoon. Um, what are these called? Malabars. Sounds like a candy bar to me. Um, so let's look at that shape I used for the head. So it was kind of circular, but not so much. It had that little more pointiness to it here. 
I'm going to throw in my guidelines. And I'm going to put in the eyes. I'm going to, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to bring his nose right here. Now, I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to bring that up. And I might play with the shape of the head. Right now, they didn't have big teeth that I noticed. I'm sure they do. But in the images, I didn't see like how a squirrel's tooth would come out. I don't know if that's something there. And I would kind of just pull out the ears. And then I would think about the body. What was that shape um, that I used? It was this pear shape, right? With a bottom heavy pear. So I came in, I'm going to make him bottom heavy, kind of like he's fat. I'm not going to draw the rest right now, just, oh, actually, you know what, I will. And then I'm going to draw out the legs, and the legs are going to come off the sides here, because he sits on his legs, on his hind, you know, on his hind legs a lot. And let's bring that out and maybe pull this out a little bit more. Like I said, my drawings are whoops. My drawings are usually messy in the beginning. So if you can follow along, awesome. If you can't, I apologize. And I'm gonna add in their feet, right? Maybe put in a couple of lines. And I want to give him some hair up there, make it a little silly. And so he's gonna have one arm like so, and the other one I'm gonna put like this, it's going to be curved, and his hand will be underneath because he's holding something. So he's holding food in that hand, and maybe in this hand he's got another thing of of food. I'm just using spheres. I don't know what they eat. It's probably some kind of nuts. Uh, what would you say there? Their colors, actually, um, the colors are actual, their camouflage. I can see that. They looked like they... Um, they look like they blended in a little bit with the background. Uh, and now for the tail, usually hangs down, but it could go off all the way back. We could have it kind of come around, you know. And that would be, uh, and I'm going to give it that two-tone right there. And that would be the Malabar. All right. I might, you know, add some stuff there. I kind of like this. I'm going to have to look into them. I've never heard of a Malabar until today, so Noah, thank you for for letting me know about them. All right. Is there another animal you'd like to draw? They eat flowers, nuts, leaves, and sometimes bird eggs. Okay. Oh, sorry, I just took a sip of water. Sometimes talking a lot, you need that replenishment. Um, okay. So if you, uh, I'll give you guys a moment to think about another animal, a possum. Wow. You're just coming up with all the, all the fun ones today, aren't you? <laughs> um, oops, let me create a new layer. A possum. I'm going to look them up real quick. I know what they look like, but. I just want to make sure. I always always use reference in your drawings. So, you know, I know a lot of people look at them and think they're this cute animal, and sometimes uh, they can be actually very scary in their appearance. Um, very sharp teeth. Uh, but you know what? I've never really met one, so I can't tell you if they're really kind or friendly. Um... But they got that, uh, they got that look where it's a circle very similar to the fox. I think, I, I believe, um, I don't know if they're in the weasel family. They, they, they are, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know. I think, are they marsupials? I don't remember. 
My animal knowledge is terrible. I apologize. <laughs> um, I just like drawing them. I don't know a lot about them. So, I'm doing this, and then they got this, uh, they're actually pretty shy, and some are in really bad shape, let's humans take care, okay, well, that's good, no. so they got this nose that comes off, it's kind of roundish, um, their face is kind of pointy, and they have very similar ears to what I just drew, but just not as, not as long as the as the uh, Malabar. They are marsupials, thanks. And they sometimes have this kind of black or grayish line in the pictures I'm looking at. Not all of them, but a lot of them kind of have this this line there, which makes me think of Mickey Mouse, you know? So we could come in and around and create a shape like so. And their eyes are usually just, well, I don't want to say usually. They're these jet black solid figures. All right. But what if, if you want to cartoon them, you know, open them up, open their eyes like you would. However, I don't want to do that. And I'll tell you why. If I remember my, my knowledge on possums, I don't think they see very well, right? Especially during the day. They're, they're marsupial, not marsupial. I mean, um, I'm blanking on the term for uh, their night animals. Um, so I'm just going to go with that and maybe give them a smile. Let's make them a happy possum. And for the body, the body is very similar. It's thinner at the top and uh, like by the head. And it kind of gets thicker and then thins out again. So I'm going to do something like this. And I'm going to... So thinner to thicker, thinner to thicker, right? And they do have legs and arms that, uh, you know, their hind legs are very hard to see in the pictures I'm looking at. But they're not very large hind legs. So what I would do is I'd probably make something small like this and... I'm going to put that oval for their feet for now. And then I'd add in a couple of lines to show his toes. Oh, even at night they're blind. So I'm going to bring their arms down. I'm going to have, I'm just going to use the three and let me use the eraser right here so we can see it. And their tails are pretty pointy and sharp and stiff. All right, and their fur kind of looks a little rough, so I'm going to rough it up by just adding some jagged lines on it. Come on, there we go. All right, and I'll do the other hand. I'll be out like that. And... So there's the marsupial. Not the way it is. I mean, if the, the possum. If you want, because they are basically blind, put sunglasses on them. It adds to the humor of cartooning these animals since they can't see. And you can put the sunglasses over their ears if you want or off to the side over it, which makes it kind of look a little funnier, you know. So that right there is a possum. How much time do we got left? Oh, we got about 20 minutes or so left. Um, let's start moving these characters more than the positions that they're in currently. Let's, let's, um, I'm going to zoom out of off my screen and back to me real quick. And... I want to think about the movement. 
So we talked about the line of action. We know that's the, the line that helps us create the, the direction, um, the position of the bodies in. And I'm keeping this book out right now, and I've shown it to you a bunch of times already, the cartoon animation by Preston Blair, right? And when we draw comics or do animation, especially in animation, our story is about movement, the movement of characters. I'm just looking for a picture right now. And this is a great drawing explaining the line of action. Okay? You can see here how what he's doing is he's really pushing the line of action. All right? Excuse me, meaning he doesn't want the characters to be stiff. He wants you to be able to create motion. Animation is about movement. It's about something happening in a sequence of time. Comics hold panels that are supposed to express time as well, but it's not, you know, when you, when you watch an animated cartoon, what you're doing is you're watching something happen in real time. It's taking a series of images or whatever to, to move from point A to point B, right? When you read a comic, you read at your own pace. So time, it could take you five minutes to read a comic, it could take you an hour, right? Whether, you know, and that panel, progression is now based on your time and the images in there are expressing are expressing time um so you could have a character say they're, they're getting ready to punch they're they're you know and they're out like this well i can't really see it let's how do i move for the camera here uh okay let me move this way for the camera so they're out like this and this could be one image the next image is it all the way down and punching and that's the second image so I didn't show this, 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 this. I just showed this and this. So what could be a second of movement or, or three minutes of movement happened within two drawings. And however long, you know, and that time has been shrunk down. Okay. I hope that makes uh, a lot of sense because when I draw, I'm always in that Let's get the motion. Let's let's try to get the best expression. Let's push the line of action to get the most interesting um, positions. So when I draw, and I draw a character, and let's say this time it's going to be... Um, Let's do, let's do a mouse. I like drawing mice. And let's say the mouse is scared. And let's give him a reason to be scared. It could be a cat. It could be a mouse trap. Um, could be a big cat like a lion. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I want my character to be arching back. So I have my line of action right here, right? Let's undo that. It's too many lines now. Okay. And I'm going to redo that line. I want it to go look like that. Now, I'm going to put its head up here and its body right here turning. Okay. Now, when I drew this, I also elongated. You saw I've been drawing with, um, I've been drawing with mostly circles. Well, the reason I'm elongating is, is in animation, we have a technique called squash and stretch. When, when gravity is pulling you closer to it, you're stretching. When you hit gravity, you squash. Um, and our facial features, um, let's see if I can show you on my face real quick. Let's go back to that. So my facial features, it's hard with my beard, but you'll notice, I'll come in closer, when I smile, okay, my cheeks squashed. But when I look scared, my face stretches. So squash and stretch is something we find in, in natural life just by observation. So I elongated the head and the body that more than I normally because he's scared. So he's jumping back and there's this giant stretch his body's in. All right. So I got that. And I'm going to follow along with his legs out like this and this leg 
out like so, and I'm seeing the bottom of the foot here, and I'm seeing the foot like this here, right? And maybe his arms are out, and his hand, this hand is up. You see his thumb, his fingers, right? And this arm is kind of doing the same thing out that way. Can you see how this pose already looks like someone is scared? Then if he has a tail, because he's a mouse, right, the tail could, I don't like it right out there. Um, I'm going to bring the, so this is the back of him, so that's the back, like, sometimes I draw things like this to kind of help. So the tail would be there. Let's have the tail go like that. All right. So you see how I just drew through my object there? I just kind of had to figure stuff out. And I got the neck right here. And I'm going to zoom in on the face right now. Let's just go to the, the face. All right. Now, I don't have to use this line of action for... Let's just make that bigger, erase quicker. For the character. So, uh, he doesn't have to be looking. He could be looking up. Right? He could be looking off to the side. He could be looking straight ahead. He could be looking down. So he may not be using that line of action. I'm sorry. Oh, I just saw Noah. You wrote, you like to think of them as gray hedgehogs because, excuse me, their fur protects them. They also have a great sense of smell and can see only about a foot away. Okay. That's cool. We're talking about the, uh, the possums. Yes. All right. Now I'm going to bring in, I want him looking down. So I'm, I'm going to kind of use that guideline, but I'm going to bring the eyes kind of lower, all right? Maybe even a little lower than that. Let's bring him down here. So his head, actually, you know what? No, let's do this. Let's give him, we'll still have him looking down, but I want to give him a higher eye line. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to stretch the eyes. That would be right here. And the eyes are going to be looking down. Now that snout that we talked about, I'm going to give him a very tiny, well, a little circle nose, right? That snout that we talked about, it's going to be small normally, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open his mouth. I'm stretching his mouth coming around here. And let's do a little bit of erasing. So what I'm doing here is I'm stretching his mouth, his little teeth right there his tongue. And I'm going to also push out on the sides. So, you know, mice could have these chubby little cheeks, right? And even his ears could be stretching. See that? His whiskers could be pointed up. Okay, zoom out. And so you can see how what I got going on here, you know, could be a really good shape. And then I'll go in and erase what I don't need. Now, I think I made his body a little big for a mouse. But that's okay. That's what eraser for. That's why practice is, is here on the computer. I can go in. And this is one of the things I love about the computer. I can come in now. And one second, I just want to remove that piece right there. And I can come in and scale it down a bit until I feel it fits. And that might be a better, a better size for a mouse. And I can come in and just make sure the head manipulates a little bit. I might even, you know, um, move the head up. So by doing that, I could elongate the neck. So think about how, how these images here could, could really, you know, be pushed. This line of action uh, is, is the important thing. I know I usually just draw curves, but in my head, I could use that curve, and I'll do this quickly, for somebody running... Whoops, that's not the position I wanted. Somebody running. Or I can use that same curve that looks like this for a guy 
maybe they're they're jumping or they're sliding into something you see let's draw a bird i love drawing birds too and let's just think of a, a we're going to probably end after the bird here we'll do one or two birds so i like to start with a circle for the bird and i'll put my guidelines in and then i'll think what kind of bird is this does it have a big beak a small beak a flat beak what kind of beak so if i was to do something a little more traditional I'm going to use a curved line, almost like I'm making a triangular shape here. And one down, like so, making the top beak longer than the bottom beak. Let me just do a little bit of erasing right there. Okay. And maybe let's put some eyes in there. And I'm going to have the eyes looking that way. And... Nope, that looks worried. I don't want that. I wanted to be happy. And what I'm going to do is I can come in and I can manipulate the head shape. All right. And I can give it a neck if it needs one. But the bodies I like to use basically for birds are beans. Okay. And I could give them tiny legs if it needs it. A little tail there and some wings, right? You know, that's a little out of proportion, but it makes it a little funnier. If What if I lower the eye line here and give them big eyes? Right? Maybe a flat beak, like I'm thinking kind of this rectangle beak like a duck. And then we always get that little bump on a duck right there and I come up and I like to this is a great shape to use on ducks chicks most birds have this this great shape and then their body is going to be a bigger is that bean shape but it's going to be bigger like that right you may not see their neck and their legs are a couple of rectangles you see that even the flat ones I made, and they could have that with a little, a little tail. Let's do, uh, let's do another type of bird here. This one I'm going to draw two shapes, like this. The top one, the top circle I just made, is the head. The bottom circle will be the legs. Now I'm going to put the guidelines up here. They're looking up, and I'm going to have the triangle going up there for the beak, right? Maybe I'll even make it smile. There we go. And by coming off around here and making big curve and some, just some bumps, nothing crazy. And we'll use a few in here. These little U shapes I make, make it look like there's feathers, right? And we could even just use stick figures right now because when birds fly, they tuck their legs in and I don't know if I tucked them in long enough, but um, let's actually fix that. Let's make it smaller. Because what I want to do is I want to add the tail feathers, right? And I could tuck the legs in up here, and we can add some curved lines. We could add a few, no, it's too big, a few little things like that. That makes it feel like he's losing some feathers while they're flying. We could even do some speed lines like he's flying really fast you can open his mouth if you wanted to and give the bottom beak let's do that let's get the eraser out and what i just did by adding this little bump it makes it look like when the mouth is open you could see the underside of the beak all right. So when you want to cartoon an animal, because I'm going to end right now. Um, when you want to cartoon an animal, what I want you to do is think about what shapes make them up. You know, what type of character? Is it kind of an angry looking character? Like what I'm doing right now is a little boxy. 
but and it's and you know look at the boxiness look at the heaviness that i'm using to create this right and i'm not going to draw a lot right now and then maybe i'll make this a little longer right but what if i gave it some eyes like here right and this could be totally a rhino You know, really sit down, think about the shapes you want to use. Because uh, like I said, cartooning is nothing more than learning how to put the shapes together. Um, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. Use reference. Look at images of whatever it is you want to draw. If you have an, a, a little figure, um, I don't have anything close to me that's not, uh, let's see, what do I got here? Um, oh, we were talking about squirrels. So I have this toy from years ago from Animaniacs. I believe it was a McDonald's toy back in the, back in the nineties. Right. And this is Slappy Squirrel and, um, what was his name? Skippy, I think. Skippy. And, uh, you know, I can look, even though it's a cartoon, I can look and say what shapes were used to put these characters together. You know, look at them in different angles. I, I, that's how I, I would learn sometimes. I would draw toys that I had. Um, let me see. Where are my glasses? I, I don't use my glasses for close-up. So when I was drawing, I took them off. But maybe I got... Uh, I do have some animals kind of far away. I'm not going to grab them now. But I can see them from here. So, Noah, anytime... I'll be back on Wednesday. This will be up on YouTube, and you can always re-watch these whenever you want. All right? Um, so, yeah, just the more you practice, the better everything is going to get. Um, use reference, and try to find the simplest forms you can. If you're looking at a picture, draw the shapes over the picture. Find the shapes in there. Draw them so you know how to put it on paper. All right? So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.